Hi friends, I'm Craig Power with Power Realty Advisors. Check it out, we're on YouTube now. In today's video, we are gonna be discussing a few tips to compete in today's crazy suburban housing market. I'm a real estate broker. Um, I focus on Greater Boston and the South Shore. Of course, before COVID, I had all these plans uh, to go out and do a first time home buyer seminar. Um, I was talking to the people at uh, Stellwagen Brewery actually in Marshfield, promoted, Stellwagen, good beer. We're going to do a first time home buyer seminar, we're going to have everybody come out, grab a pint. We're going to talk about uh, sort of achieving that goal, putting together a plan um, for, for getting you in your first house. Of course, times have changed and we can no longer do business in the group setting. So what I figured we would do is a good old fashioned pivot to video, which is what I'm doing here. We're going to start putting together some YouTube content for you, really covering anything real estate related um, to sort of make up. You know, we're making up our own first time home buyer seminar via YouTube. So I definitely hope it's useful for anybody watching. I think you will find, you know, I'm a millennial, I'm 32 years old. Even though I cover a variety of topics, a lot of it is geared toward millennials, you know, who are going through the process, overcoming those unique challenges of our generation. Um, to uh, achieve the goal of buying their first home. So a lot of it is geared that way. Um, either or, I just hope it's useful for somebody out there. Uh, and of course, if you have any questions for uh, you know anything real estate related, go ahead and shoot me an email. You can contact me directly. My email is craig at powerrealtyboston.com, C-R-A-I-G at powerrealtyboston.com. Um, and then I forgot to mention, you know, I am new to YouTube. I'm getting used to this YouTube lifestyle. Uh, so if you want to go down and condition me, just go in the comments, just leave the mean, just say the meanest possible thing you could think of. Just like the most negative thing that ever comes to mind. Uh, you know, just go down and just let me have it. Um, it would really condition me to this, this new YouTube thing. I, I, I'm very new and I really want to jump in with both feet here. So that would be great. Uh, anyway, shifting to today's actual topic, which is strength of offer. Strength of offer when making an offer on a home. What do I mean by strength of offer? Well, we're in a seller's market right now. So the way this market is moving, there are a lot of interested, a lot of capable buyers out there, but a low number of houses on the market. We have low inventory. Um, so not only is the low inventory fueling it, we also have low interest rates, uh, which is free money. So we just have a very competitive, it's a hyper competitive marketplace. Honestly, what's going on is, you know, a place goes up on the market. There are so many buyers. There are a million clicks. Everybody's trying to set up a showing. Uh, and then what we're dealing with are multiple offer situations. Um, I work with a lot of first time home buyers, like I mentioned before, and it's a really, you know, competitive marketplace. It's hard for, for them to work. Um, it's hard to stand out in these multiple offer situations. Really, these houses are going over the course of a weekend, right? They get listed on a Wednesday or a Thursday, and then by Monday at five o'clock, they want all these offers in. So that's what brings us to this concept of, of strength of offer, right? How do you stand out? How do you show uh, that you're different from, from the rest of the, the crowd, the rest of the offers that they're dealing with? Um, obviously, that bottom line price is a huge factor, and I won't lie, that's always the number one thing that the seller's gonna look at. If you were in their position, you'd be doing the same thing. But um, what we're talking about here today is aside from that, right? So I really break it down to four different categories um, aside from the bottom line number um, that can help you to stand out when it comes to strength of offer. Number one is the pre-approval letter or the lender relationship, really. So we submit a pre-approval letter with your offer. Uh, that gives the seller an idea of your buying power that you've been approved for. It should give them a little extra layer of security that, okay, you're capable of buying this home and closing on it. Uh, the other thing, you know, you want to work with an experienced lender with the sort of people skills and, and really sales skills to go along with it. It's not uncommon for the listing agent in these competitive situations to actually call the lender and vet your offer a little bit more, maybe ask about employment. Um, so if you do need a lender, of course, we do have people we work with that we could refer you to. Uh, go ahead and send us a message. We'd be happy to get you linked up. But that's just off the top. We include a pre-approval letter with every offer. Number two, and this is probably the main thing I wanted to talk about today, is seller concessions, right? So I include you know, seller concessions and the ability to be flexible all under one umbrella here. 
Um, so when I say seller concessions, you want to limit those seller concessions. You want to deliver a clean offer, a clean contract. You know, when you go to buy a car or something like that, you don't like it when they're hitting you with a bunch of fine print, right? Any, any purchase you make where there's all these little, you know, uh, details that, you know, you weren't aware of coming into the deal, you don't like to agree to that stuff. It's just, it's natural. It's, a, it's an instinct. You know, you don't want to deal with this stuff later. So that's what I'm talking about when it comes to seller concessions. You want to make it as easy as possible on the seller. Um, and that's why I include, you know, being flexible in this part of it. Um, if you can work with the seller, maybe the seller uh, has a particular closing date in mind that would work for you, or, you know, maybe it's a small omission for you to work within their, those constraints, those scheduling constraints. Um, if you can make that happen, that's a total check. It, you know, that's that's a huge feather in your cap when it comes to your offer. Additionally, we have a lot of people that will want you to include a suitable housing con contingency. Work with them a little bit while they buy their next home. If you can work with them on that, that's a huge thing. You weigh two offers, right? Same general amount, but one will work with us on the schedule and one won't. One will be flexible, one won't. They're going to go with the flexible one. So that's just something to keep in mind and something we want to go through every single time we're building an offer. Um, just that flexibility, any way you can work with it um, on the seller's behalf, you know, work with the sellers a little bit. Conversely, right, when we say seller concessions, you know, there are definitely some options out there to waive contingencies, financing contingency, waive your inspection contingency, appraisals, all that. Listen, I never recommend waiving a home inspection contingency. I'll tell you that flat out. I don't care if you're a first time buyer or if you bought a hundred houses, you know what I mean? I get that there are some investors out there that uh, really know what they're doing and that's great. I just don't go into any transaction not recommending a home inspection. There's just too many variables. Now by definition, does it make your offer stronger to the seller? Yes, it absolutely does. Uh, you know, if you were a seller and somebody came in, they said they don't want an inspection, that eliminates a lot of variables, a lot of chance, a lot of risk for them. So yes, it does make a stronger offer, and that's what we're talking about here today. Um, but for our buyers, I just, I can't recommend uh, not getting a home inspection. Can't bring myself to do it. But that's number two. In the end, you just want to limit the seller concessions. Write a letter. Um, some agents don't believe in this. I definitely do. I've seen it work. At a minimum, you're putting a face with the name. Um, you're putting uh, a real personality behind all the legal paperwork and the numbers. Um, you know, at this point, you've hopefully been through the seller's house. You may have detected a few things you have in common. That would be great. Include it in the letter. Um, maybe you have a great job, right? Maybe you have a great job. You just want to brag about it in the letter. Show a little bit more stability. Um, that's great too. Uh, we mentioned during peak COVID that my client had a, he worked in beer and alcohol distribution. Um, he's recession proof, literally the most recession proof job there is, uh, offer accepted. So, you know, include that type of stuff, write a letter, put a little personality, put a little spin on it and get the seller's attention. Number four, offer a higher earnest money deposit. So the earnest money deposit is generally between one and 3% of the transaction. Generally, you'll, you'll hear people say 1% of the transaction. Um, around here, I've seen it usually between $1,000 and $5,000. But if you can show a little bit more strength, a little bit more buying power right at the outset, it really sits well with, with sellers. It shows that money is not an issue for you, that you have the money in your bank account today and you're ready to hand it over today for the house. Um, of course, the caveat with uh, the earnest money deposit and the higher earnest money deposit is that, you know, if you wake up 10 days from now, you decide you're not ready to buy a house uh, for no good reason anyway, um, then they're entitled to that deposit and you could end up losing it. And I would be saying, hey man, we've had this conversation 12 times, what the heck happened? But that's a story for another day. In the end, number four, higher earnest money deposit. And that's our video. Hopefully you learned something. Um, when you go to make an offer on a home, you should be considering all these factors and I would definitely recommend these little strategies to stand out. Um, and of course, you can always turn to us for all of your real estate questions. It doesn't matter your timeline for buying or selling a home. You know, if you just need a quick question answered, please don't hesitate to reach out. Uh, you can contact me directly again at Craig at PowerRealtyBoston.com. I also wanted to give a quick shout out to our unofficial sponsor today. Uh, this is uh, Sweet Baby Ray's Barbecue Sauce. 
the sauce is the boss. Um, you know, I've really been following these guys for a long time and uh, I really love what they're doing. Just really excited to see what they do next. Uh, hopefully, hopefully just more barbecue sauce, really. Uh, more of the same. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. Uh, but thanks for watching our video today, our first kind of YouTube video. And uh, please feel free to contact us anytime. Thanks for watching.